when we think thoughts, we are either thinking from the mind of Christ, and the Bible tells us we Christians, we have the mind of Christ, or we are thinking from a mind that is outside of the mind of Christ. In other words, it is not the mind of Christ. So any thoughts that are not coming from within the mind of Christ are thoughts that are contrary to the mind of Christ. Because if they were not contrary to the mind of Christ, they would be coming from the mind of Christ. So regardless of how innocent a thought or a way of thinking, a mindset may seem, if it's not coming from the mind of Christ, in other words, be in alignment with the mind of Christ, in other words, be in alignment with Christ, in other words, be in alignment with the word of God. If it's not coming from that place, it doesn't matter how innocent this thinking is, it is contrary to the mind of Jesus Christ. And we need to be very careful of even thoughts that seem innocent, but are contrary to the mind of Christ. Because that would be the equivalent of the serpent coming into the Garden of Eden. So sneaky, so innocent. And speaking to Eve and telling her, did God really tell you not to eat from that tree? Knowing good and well that yes, God did say do not eat from that tree. Because the day you eat from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So it's not representing fruits, physical fruits that we eat. It represents knowledge. It represents you're taking in information, knowledge from another source other than the source of God. And this knowledge that comes in will become your thinking. You will start thinking it. So that's what that represents. And so the serpent said to Eve, God didn't say that. Because when you do eat from that tree, your eyes will open and you will be like God. So now it's Eve starts to think, oh, so there's something in there that I don't already have. When she already has everything in God. So there's something in there that can benefit me. And the Bible says, and the fruit looked appetizing, appealing to the eyes. So be careful of what looks innocent or even appealing to the eyes. Or, or, or however you may think that that thing will benefit you. If it's not coming from the mind of Christ. Then it's coming from a different source. And we need to be, to be careful of demonic thinking, okay? Demonic thinking um, is a way of thinking that brings darkness to your conscience, is a way of thinking that uh, brings death, is a way of thinking that is outside of the mind of Christ. Um, demonic thinking does not come from God. It does not come from Jesus. Um, it comes from another source it comes from another mind that is of the enemy and demonic thinking does not always this way of thinking does not always show up as uh, dark heavy thinking so you know oh, that's not God it comes in sneakily and it it, it deceives because the devil is a, far, a liar and the father of lies it deceives uh, the thinker the one who is accepting this thought. Because not every thought that comes into your mind is your thought. You know, someone can plant thoughts in your mind. So I could say to you, mm hmm. Oh, I'd really fancy an ice cream right now. Automatically, I'm putting that thought into your mind. Can you see? Well, the devil can do the same. And he does. How? Through Hollywood movies, through xbox games through uh, these worldly uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call it uh, worldly music you know all, all their lyrics in today's worldly music all their lyrics are demonic so when you're when, when when you're that that's like allowing the devil just to speak directly into your mind and then you're driving your car and you're singing along to this demonic music um all their lyrics are dark um and that's that that's just some of many ways billboards things like that that's just magazines scrolling through social media through this nonsense people's nonsense people's darkness that's allowing that's like allowing demons to speak right into your mind um and, and then you start thinking it and that's not the mind of christ that's demonic thinking okay not every thought that comes into your mind is yours okay we don't accept thoughts that are not coming from the mind of Jesus, which means it goes without saying you have to know the word of God. So you know what is the mind of Christ. Um, because when you take the word of God and a thought comes in 
that is not in alignment with that, you've just used the word of God to measure the other thinking that is coming in. And because you have something to measure it by, you automatically know that's not from God. So you can reject it, throw it out by saying, I'm not accepting this thought, this thought, stop thinking it. And if that thought, sometimes these thoughts like battle to come back in. So you keep thinking it, keep thinking it. Just open the word of God, put your mind somewhere else, start reading the word of God. And in, in this in this time where you're trying to throw that thought out, because throw it out, because sometimes if you think a thought for so long, it begins to have some power over you. So sometimes just turning away from the thought doesn't cause it to vanish it, it it comes back for more because that's what you've trained yourself to do think these kind of thoughts open the bible and start reading and during this time when the thought is trying to come back in when you're reading the bible a lot of the times you won't even though you've read these scriptures so many times when this warfare is happening in your mind a lot of the time you will be reading the word of god to stay away from that and you won't even understand what you're reading you won't even remember what you're reading because there's a warfare going on, so you're finding it difficult to concentrate on what you're reading. In that situation, continue reading. Even if you don't understand what you're reading, even if you do not remember what you're reading, continue reading the Word of God that is alive and active. The Word of this Word of God is coming into your mind, and it's doing warfare with that other thinking that is not of God. Before you know it, that thought will subside. Okay, uh, because it's spiritual warfare in your mind. You know, the battlefield is your mind. The battlefield is your mind and so don't accept teachings that go against uh, the word of god and it could be thought or teachings such as you know we're only human we can't fully stop sinning but sadly i've heard so far too many christians uh, teaching these kind of things we're only human we can't fully stop sinning so they, they take scripture even christians and they twist it a scripture that says um we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Or he who said he he who says he has not sinned is a liar. Yes, we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's exactly why we needed the Savior, our Savior Jesus Christ. So these scriptures that these twisted scriptures that they're quoting, misunderstanding scripture, it's talking about before Jesus Christ, and that's why we needed Jesus Christ to come into the scene. After Jesus comes and those who receive him, the Bible says, he who is in Christ, see before you were out of Christ, now you are in Christ. So he who is in Christ does not sin and cannot sin because the seed of God is in him. Okay, so don't accept teachings that, um, uh, that are going against the word of God teachings that um uh, are going against um uh, the uh, the mind of christ teachings that are going against jesus christ well the doctor said that this disease is incurable well i can't fully be healed that's going against the word of god because the word of god says by the stripes of jesus christ you have been healed uh, I, I, so that's demonic thinking to be thinking this disease is incurable or it could be another demonic thing the thinking such as oh this bondage will never go away it can never be free of this bondage that's thinking from another mind that's thinking from another source because the mind of christ says the source that is drawing from god says jesus came to destroy the works of darkness he came to set the captives free who the son says free is free indeed and where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom can you see they contradict one another so one is from the mind of christ one is your, your thinking the thoughts godly holy thoughts you're thinking truth and the other one is uh, is demonic thoughts what you're doing in essence is you are feeding off of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil why good and evil well because god only creates good so you're taking the good that is of God and you're making it evil. For example, healing. Healing is of God. But you're twisting it and making it evil. I will never fully be healed. 
Or it could be that God has given you revelation about someone so you can go and help them. Revelation such as um, uh, uh, the reason why they have this uh, attitude is because uh, um, the reason why they have this this ungodly attitude right now is because they went through rejection when they were younger. So God has given you personally this revelation, this information. That's the knowledge of good. God has given you good knowledge. But now you take it and twist it. Then you feel bad for doing that. Just because you got rejected when you were younger doesn't mean you should behave like that. So you've just you've just taken what is good and turned it into evil. That's the, you're, That's consuming from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so... Um, and, and, and these are you, these are huge open doors and what you're doing is you're allowing um, d demonic thinking to come into your mind because you're consuming from the tree of the knowledge of evil and that's darkening your conscience it's darkening your thinking um, before you know it you're, you're meditating on this thinking you're creating worst case scenarios even if something hasn't happened you're creating worst case scenarios of the bad thing that will happen because that's what demonic thinking does. It wants to put you in fear. It wants to torment you. It wants to bring you anxiety. It wants to cause you to worry and so on and so forth. It wants to spiritually paralyze you. Uh, and, and, and in essence, that's a spiritual prison. Um, the devil wants to put everyone in bondage, either mental oppression uh, um, or uh, physical, mental oppression, depression, suicidal thoughts, uh, bipolar, uh, things like that, or uh, physical oppression like um, a sickness or a disease. You know, some people, are, so many people, they're always going to the doctors to, to have blood tests it, 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 with, with the belief that something's wrong with me and the, the results come back there's nothing wrong with them so a few months later go for more tests because something's wrong with me nothing's wrong with them the tests come back nothing nothing's wrong with them then they go back again a few months later something's wrong with me and um that's that that's demonic thinking the devil is is, is, is trying to put something on you um he, he's this demonic thinking something's wrong with you something's wrong with you something's wrong with you or if he has managed to already put something onto you or in you, like arthritis, let's say, because these are the works of darkness, they're not the works of the kingdom of God, um, then he he, um, he he wants to do everything he can to keep that there. Ah, oh, that arthritis will never go away. Oh, you will never be healed. Oh, if God wanted you healed, he would have healed you by now. Oh, um... Uh, you're only human you can't fully stop sinning so you can keep opening the doors for more and more sin bringing more and more darkness into your life <coughs> or that bondage is your portion if God wanted you uh, free he would have freed you by now you know so you can keep opening these doors and creating more demonic thinking yeah this bondage is my portion yeah I will always remain like this and what he's doing he's making sure he's creating lies upon lies upon lies using your thinking to make sure that you never get free from that because you get free from the one thing there's another lie there in place to catch you you get free from that there's another lie there in place to catch you and these are all demonic thinkings it's like a demonic strongholds it's like the enemy set, setting up real estates in your mind and these needs to be cast down they need to be cast down in the name of jesus how is it cast down you need to renew your mind. You know, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewed mind. So the, the Bible is saying, don't, don't be conformed to the patterns of this world. Don't follow the ways of this world, how most of humanity is living by default mode. Because the Bible says mo the world is under the sway of the evil one. Don't follow, don't be allow this world to shape you, to shape your thinking, to shape your heart, to shape your desires, to shape the path of your future. Don't allow this world to do that. Scripture is saying, do not conform to those patterns because these patterns are not of God. Instead, it's saying, 
be transformed by the renewed mind. Which renewed mind? The mind of Christ. So how do you transform all of that? By allowing the mind of Christ to renew your thinking, to change your thinking. So the only way to allow the mind of Christ to change your thinking, of course you need Jesus in your heart and you need to receive the Holy Spirit. But you need to get in the word of God to know the mind of Christ, to know the word of God and allow this information, not the, the knowledge of good and the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but the knowledge of God. Allow the knowledge of God to transform you, your mind, your heart, your, your, your soul, your body, everything about you. You can't be a friend of God and a friend of the world at the same time because they are contrary to one another. The ways of this world is against the ways of God. You can't allow, it, it, you can't want God to reshape you, to renew your mind, while at the same time opening yourself up to the ways of this world, conforming to the ways of this world. Because by doing that, you're opening the door for the spirit of this world to come in. The Bible tells us that there's, there's a spirit of this world. You know, look at a, a lot of the world. Everyone wants to be unique. Everyone wants to be free, yet they're all following one another, yet they all look the same. And they all want to be unique because they're all controlled by one spirit, the spirit of the world. Which is at war with the Holy Spirit, right? So you need to renew your thinking and, and you start bit by bit, step by step, always with the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit leads, not as you see fit. Thought by thought, one thought at a time, one step at a, at a time. Don't try to fly before you can run. Don't try to run before you can walk, walk. Don't try to walk before you crawl. We're starting off as babies here. We start crawling first. So don't try and try and do any major big things, you know. And then if that doesn't work, you say, oh, see, this stuff doesn't work. Crawl first. Start crawling on your knees first. Start crawling and renew your mind bit by bit. And then you need to be, the aim is to get to a place where you're thinking from the mind of Christ. So any thought of the enemy that tries to come in, it will be like your spiritual antennas are on alert, beep, 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 and they will alert you. That's not of the Holy Spirit. And you draw near to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22 through 24. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. Another version says, if your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is not single, your whole body will be full of darkness. If the light then in you is darkness, how dark is that darkness? <clears throat> this is another example of feeding off of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So God gives you a scripture and that says, if thy eye be single, so that's the knowledge of good. Now, new ages take that. So, so it's talking about the, the, the eyes of the heart to be single on Jesus. In other words, concentrate only on Jesus. New ages take this, twist it, because they have another spirit operating in them, not the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will never go against the word of God. They twist it and say, oh, if the eye be single, it's talking about a third eye that Buddhists use and Hindus use. And, and uh, uh, it, it's the poor to... to uh, ancient civil and things like that. it's all demonic work anyway you see they've taken the good and they've turned it into evil so they're feeding off of the, 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 the tree of the knowledge of good and evil right so let me explain this scripture Matthew chapter 6 verse 22 through 24 the lamp of the body is the eye so let's say this is a lamp and the room is dark and the lamp is on this lamp releases light releases light so there must be light in it releases light okay but the bible says the lamp of the body is the eye in other words it works both ways when you are when you're uh, the light of jesus christ is in your heart 
So the light is already in the lamp and it releases light outside of the lamp because the light is already in the lamp. So the light of Jesus is already in your heart if Jesus is in your heart. So the lamp is the eye. When Jesus is in your heart, you release from your eyes the light around you. You are the light of the world. But it also goes the other way. When you are singularly focused on Jesus, you receive the light of Jesus through the lamp. You see, the, the eyes are the gateway of the soul. You, really, you receive the light of Jesus through your eyes and it's coming into you, filling your whole body with light. If your eye be single, if you're singularly focused on Jesus, if your heart is singularly focused on Jesus, you're, release, you're receiving this light, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is not single, in other words, if your eye is not good, so you're focused on here, there, everywhere, you're not focused on the light. So even if something looks good, because it's not the light, you can't possibly receive light from it, even if it looks good. Okay, because Jesus is the only light. He says, I am the light. So when you're focused on anything else and your, your heart is not single on Jesus, then you're filling your body with darkness. And because you might think that's so innocent, that's so this, that's so whatever, you're thinking, this is good, this is light. If the light in you is darkness, how dark is that darkness? You think it's light, but it's darkness, like in New Ages. How dark is that darkness? Even darker than darkness, because you actually you're actually deceived into thinking it's light you know be singularly focused on jesus um in his word fellowshipping with him praising him worshiping him reading the bible praying to him just sitting in his presence and not doing anything without speaking sometimes just really enjoying his presence and, and what his presence is revealing to you how his presence feels what you are receiving from his presence because the presence of God is always giving you something whether it's giving you peace whether it's giving you a revelation whether it's giving you just unconditional love filling you with unconditional love whether you're just being filled not just but whether you're being filled with the light because you're because because you're in that presence you're singularly focused on Jesus and therefore your whole body will be full of light and that light is coming into you and then you get out of the presence of God and you feel refreshed. You, feel, you shouldn't be getting out of the presence of God. That's not what I meant. I mean, you get up from that position, but you're still within the presence of God. And you just feel refreshed. You feel, Or if you're going to sleep, you just feel like, my bed is so comfortable. My feet are so comfortable. My, the, the way my, my head is on the pillow is just so comfortable. And automatically that awakens within you a state of gratitude. So now... It, it, you're just thanking God, you're so grateful, you're so grateful for this bed, this warmth, this softness, this cleanness, this everything that just feels so, 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 so wonderful, so good in the presence of God. Can you see how one thing is awakening the other? One thing is awakening the other. Because iron sharpens iron. And, and, and the same for the negative side. One thing awakens the other. When you're when you allow this demonic thinking, it will awaken different things. Now I'm angry of what someone said to me five years ago. Now I'm offended by that, how that person is looking at me. Can you see how one thing is awakening the other? Because there, there are these two, these two minds. There's no middle ground. There's no third path. There's no middle ground. Because every time you step outside of the ways of Jesus, you are automatically outside of Jesus. There's no middle ground. Whether you step outside of Jesus from over here or from over here or from over here, it's outside. It's outside of Jesus, which means you're no longer thinking from the mind of Christ. Okay. Anything outside of this, which is the light, is darkness. This is why we need to be hidden in Christ and be thinking from the mind of Christ. The Bible says you have the mind of Christ. So start meditating on the mind of Christ by thinking about him, by uh, thinking about his presence, by being aware of his presence, by quoting scripture, by having scriptures on your walls and reading them, by thinking about him, how his, by feeling his peace, by 
um, knowing his love by um, quoting scripture, declaring his word, scripture over yourself, even if you do not yet believe it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. Just like some people keep doing negative thinking, keep doing negative thinking, keep doing that. No, it's, it's like break the cycle. Keep doing Christ and your whole life will change. If you abide in his word, you will truly be his disciple and you will know the truth and that truth will set you free.